One of my students recently asked me to talk about the copywriting research process. And honestly, researching is probably one of the most important parts of copywriting, yet the most underrated. I've seen it again and again with my students where I ask them what their research process is. They usually don't have one and that explains why they hit writer's block and they have so much trouble writing sales copy. In this video, I'm going to teach you my personal process that I actually take when I'm researching a new product, industry, and client, and how that impacts my writing process and how I use all of that research. But first of all, why should you research before you're writing sales copy? Probably the most important thing is that it allows you to understand your consumers. If you're writing purely from the dark without any kind of research, you don't really know what keeps them up at night, what their desires and feelings are their demographics, and you're really operating out of assumptions. And any good marketing or advertising is data-driven and doesn't come from ideas and theories. It comes from data, analytics, and research. And that ultimately allows you to write something better and produce better results. Secondly, you better understand your own or your client's competitors. When you're writing sales copy for something, there is gonna be other products and services out there. You're not the only one. And by researching an industry and market's competitors, you're able to develop a unique value proposition, understand how you stand up against the other businesses, and ultimately position your product or offer better than what else is on the market. And then having all this information at your fingertips allows you to write in a way that avoids writer's block, hitting that blank screen where you don't know what to write and you don't know what comes next, being unconfident or frustrated with your writing because you don't know if it's actually gonna move the needle and make results. And it's absolutely 100% necessary that you have a research process in place and let's actually jump into exactly what I do when I'm taking on a new project. Okay, so step one is collecting resources. We do have to have all this information compiled in one place. I like using Google Drive, but feel free to use any other kind of tool or software or app to compile everything that you're researching. So you can have it in one place and you can reference it while you're writing. That's really the main goal. Take all this information, all of your research, put it into one place. And then when you're writing, you can constantly go back to it to make sure once again, you're referring to the right information, you're talking to the right audience, and you're positioning yourself in a way that's better than what else is on the market. In this example, we'll pretend that we're writing sales copy for a local home renovation company. Now I have one of the documents that I personally use when I'm writing copy, and essentially outlines the different resources that I should collect, the questions we'll be asking about the product, about the competitors in the market, and then essentially how we're gonna put that all together in our writing. But the first thing we need to do is go ahead and collect different things like blog posts and articles. There's market and industry reports, which are really helpful. Reviews, especially on Amazon and Google. Clients, website pages, so anything that they already have that's existing that we can reverse engineer and take notes on. Social media, especially Reddit, is one of my favorites, and I'll show you exactly why. Forums, any kind of competitors and what we can learn from them. Internal documents like content guidelines and branding guidelines and then a buyer's persona. So let's actually start putting together some of these things and then I'll show you what it looks like. So the pretend company that we're researching for will be called John's Renovations New York. Essentially it will be a residential renovation company in New York City. And what we'll do here is I'm on Google and I typed in New York Renovation Company and I'll be looking up some of the competitors. So let me pull up their websites in different tabs and then we can visit them and start taking some notes. But the first thing I'm looking for is articles or blog posts. So let's just scan these websites real quick. And there's tons of other things we can learn from them for sure. And we'll go back to that. But I just want to see if we can find some content first that we can start kind of collecting and putting in our document here. Normally, I'm looking in the header tab up here if there's any kind of blog post or article link. If not, we can look in the bottom of the footer here. And you can see right there, there's blog. So let's take that. I'll get that link. I'm going to put it into our document here. So either you can format it how you like. But for example, I'll just put a little alt tab there and put it in there. We'll check this other company. It looks like they do have a blog as well. And why I'm doing that is not only does it give us blog post ideas if we plan to write content for our own company or a client, but I can go through them just to learn more about the industry and what's going on. And so let me put this one in back in here. Let me put that link in here as well. And I'm gonna keep those websites open because there's a lot more we can probably learn from them. If we go back to Google and I append a blog to that search, there's a lot of things that pop up. We have renovation inspiration, Hinman construction, resources for New York City homeowners. That's perfect because we're gonna get into the head of the residential consumer. So once again, I'm gonna take that link, put it in here. I'm gonna add those other ones I found as well. There's Hinman construction, they put that in there. And then there's this final one right here we'll put in. So. We actually have one, two, three, four, five different blogs that we can start researching and learning from. And then now we can go into market reports. So let's go find some market reports about residential real estate, maybe real estate in New York and see what we can find. Once again, I'm here on Google and I typed in New York real estate report. So Rocket Homes, housing market report, 
prices, trends, and forecasts. Maybe we'll do, we'll type in residential real estate because that's specifically what we're working with. Market reports, so probably some paid ones in here. And you have to remember that there's free reports that are obviously great, they're free to access. Some will require payment. You don't always have to buy them, to be honest. With myself, I typically just use the free reports and all the other things we're researching. Don't feel pressure to pay for anything. If it is behind a paywall, you can easily get around that. Okay, I can see on Rocket Homes, lots of good information about the market itself. So let me put that into market reports. We'll go to the next one here, housing market trends, prices, and forecast. We can put that in as well. The next one's on Forbes. And something I would like though is more about Maybe consumers and what they want out of a real estate or real estate construction company, if that makes sense. So let me go adjust my Google search. Okay, I readjusted the Google search to home buyer statistics. I want to look up data about the average consumer that's buying a house, maybe getting renovations, and then we can use that to shape the copy. I'm going to go through here and try to find a couple of different articles. I liked this one right here. I can tell it's a good piece of information. Here's a good roundup of 88 real estate pieces of data. And then maybe I could find another one here, housing market data and research. Now, if it's specific to New York, that'd be great. It doesn't necessarily have to be because a lot of what we find in real estate will be probably similar across different countries and states, as long as that's not too drastic. I'm gonna go in here, toss in a couple more of these reports and data roundups that I have. I think this is the last one right here, real estate facts. And now reviews. Now this is probably the most important step when you're trying to understand the consumer and the market as a whole. And that's actually looking up different competitors and seeing what the consumers are talking about. And what I'll do here is I'll make a lot more space because I'm definitely gonna need it. But we'll go back to Google and we'll find some local competitors and start mining the reviews. Okay, so typing in New York renovation company, just type in your industry, your niche, and maybe even a local business term like the local city or region. And then we're right here on Google and we can see all these different Google map listings. So let's just click this one that has 106 reviews and let's start seeing what the customers are actually saying, both good and bad. We wanna know exactly what they're looking for, but also how maybe they've been dissatisfied with the industry and this business in particular. And what we're looking for is any kind of patterns or trends and the psychology behind the consumer. And then we'll take notes on that and use it in our writing. So this person here said that they understand budget and they give you good information on what will happen as a part of your renovation. They're really fantastic to work with. They have good, respectful staff. They don't skirt around the rules. They have great listening skills and they review the situation and speak to you thoughtfully about what to expect and your options. So that's pretty good. What we can do is actually just take this completely and copy and paste that into our document here. So we have that one testimonial. Let's go back actually to that business and see what else people say. And it looks like in this review, one of the customers said what makes them stand out is a warranty. So now that's something we can probably include when we're writing copy is talk about the guarantee, the warranty that they don't have to worry about anything breaking or falling apart because even worst case scenario, if it does, there's a warranty to replace that. I'll take that, we'll put that back into our document. You can also use a spreadsheet or some other kind of tool if you wanna clean it up. Honestly, what I like doing is just putting everything in here and then I'll organize it and format it and make it a little bit nicer on the eyes. I love our new bathroom and I love the team of people who made it happen. They're a one-stop shop and they take care of every detail from beginning to end. No need to hire an architect. They even draft the plans for you. That's kind of interesting because there's almost a cost savings benefit of working with these guys. You don't need the architect or the designer. They're also gonna take care of that for you. And there's that peace of mind element too because you're not hiring a bunch of people to do the renovation. So let's take that in here. This is actually a really big one, but let's copy and paste that in. Okay, we have that. And I'll actually start taking a few notes based on each of these. So below this one, let's see what they said. So I'm gonna take this part here, they understand your renovation and they give you a good budget. So we can talk about being budget friendly, we're not expensive and we'll stay within your range. So they don't skirt around the rules. They do everything legally and legitimately. They stay within the rules, especially if there's a condo building or some kind of housing unit where they have to stay within certain restrictions. So great listening skills, and then they review the situation and they give you different options. So we can talk about maybe how the company is flexible and they'll work with you depending on your vision and your exact goals. It's not a cookie cutter kind of renovation company. 
And then with this review right here, let's try to pull something from it. There was a couple things. So they were happy. It was professionally done. And okay, so provides a warranty. That was a big thing from this review. They take, oh, they take care of it free of charge. Take care of warranty and any issues free of charge. That's really good. We can definitely include that as a value proposition about what's a, what makes us stand out. And then let's add some notes below this one right here. Add in our list and let's see what we can pull from this one. Okay, so I like that they're a one-stop shop. That's actually a really good, another value proposition. So one-stop shop, no need to hire a designer or architect. They assign you one in-house, that's perfect. They take care of securing city and building permissions. That's really nice because once again, it's one less thing the homeowner has to worry about. So we'll put that in there. That's definitely another good part of the benefit of working with them. And even the value proposition itself, because a lot of home renovation companies might not actually go that far. And then the consumer or the client is left to kind of deal with the permissions and different things like that, which can be a real pain. The price he quoted was pretty much what it ended up being. That's also important too, because if you ever worked with a contractor or a renovation company yourself, you know that sometimes what they actually quote you isn't what you end up getting billed. It can often be a lot more expensive, which obviously is disheartening and not a lot of fun when you have to pay thousands of extra dollars than what you originally thought. It's nice that what they quote is pretty much what you get, so we can definitely include that within the copy. Sending detailed weekly reports, photographs, and updates throughout the project. That's awesome. We can mention we do that because obviously the consumer wants to see the project coming along. They don't want to be in the dark. And having a renovation company that communicates very well is a huge plus. Okay, I think we pulled up some pretty good notes from these reviews and we can always mine more. But once again, I'm just trying to give you a kind of quick and general overview of what the research process looks like. You can spend a lot more time here getting dozens of reviews if you wanted and really mining into them. But the point is just take at least a few, get some key points from them and then use that in your sales copy. And now the next thing is using the client's website pages and pulling some information from those. So let's do that right now. But the thing is, this is a pretend company. We don't actually have a website to learn from and pull data from, but instead we'll use a competitor to do this process. And here's Hinman Construction that I pulled up earlier. We'll use them as an example of what you can do to analyze a website, whether it's your own clients or a competitor. So here on the homepage, we can see construction news and projects before and after. That's actually pretty good. So let me put that in here. So we'll say add before and afters. Add link to news and blog posts. Go back there, design to completion. Awarded the gold award, nice. So we should probably include social proof about awards and anything we have achieved in recent years. So we have that, let's go back here. Before and after again. How to conquer the kitchen counter, maybe for good. Tips and helpful information, that's pretty good. Now let's go actually to the about page, see what we can pull from here. So it looks like they have an image of the actual founders or people that maybe work in the company. They talk about their history, they have some pictures of their work. So let me put that in there. So about page. We want to include photos of the team, our work, and talk about the history of the company. And that's important to build a relationship with the audience. A lot of people don't realize the about page is very important in copywriting. It's a whole separate topic and discussion I can do a video on, but it's important to really showcase how the company started, where it is today, and how that benefits the end consumer. Also, they have their mission statement here, which is pretty cool. So we can also add a section on our, maybe our values and our mission statement. And then the customer can align with that and they can relate. Looks like they have more people, the team. Okay, so we'll also put, uh, let's see, about page, include photos. Let me put this here, sorry. Put that all on the about page. Um, so team positions and information about them maybe. If not, just kind of a little basic overview 
like they do on this website. Our process, okay, so we include something like that, our work process and value proposition. And then let's go on to the service pages. There's, I think there was kitchen, bathrooms. Yeah, kitchens, bathrooms, additions. So let's go to kitchens and see what we can learn from here. Expertise, gallery, testimonials, and contact. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we can probably use that ourselves. So include a gallery because obviously if somebody wants a kitchen, let's say, they probably want to see what kind of renovations you've done. Include a gallery, include a form to contact. And then there was something else here. Client testimonials, yeah, of course. And social proof in the form of testimonials. Let's go back here. Modern household. It's the center point of your home. I actually kind of like that line. Let's use that. The kitchen, you kind of replace that with anything. You could say the living room is the center point of the, the home. I kind of just like how they use that line. Sounds pretty good. And I think we could probably use that on a couple different pages. Put that right there. Once again, this is just giving you an example of how you can just look on a competitor's page or your client and you'll pull little phrases and pieces of information, you analyze it, and then think about when you apply that to your own copywriting. Now you just vastly improved it. You're learning from a company that's already successful and winning with their sales copy and you're reverse engineering it but making it even better. So it's a really important part of the process and it's a lot of fun too, just kind of going through all this research, mining data and doing the analytical side that a lot of people don't do, and it's a huge mistake. So they have their gallery here, contact form. Okay, and I'm presuming all the other service pages probably have that flow. Yeah, client testimonial, contact. Okay, that sounds good. So let's go on to the next part actually that we have in here, which is one of my favorites, social media. Okay, if you don't know, reddit.com is one of the biggest, if not the biggest community website where there's different subreddits or sub communities about any kind of topic or interest. And what we can do is look up an interest related to what we're writing about and then start mining and looking into all the conversations that people are having to get into the psychology and get into their head. For example, I'm on this home renovation subreddit and I can start going through and just seeing what people are talking about, if they've worked with a renovation company and any kind of like complaints or questions they might have or the opposite. If there's something they really enjoyed, we can take all that, put it in our research document and use it while we're writing. Okay, I couldn't find too much on that subreddit, so I went to the contractor subreddit, and I can already tell there's a ton of good stuff. For example, there's this thread on, here's why you can't find a good contractor. Let's see what they have to say. As a general contractor, why so many homeowners complain about not finding a good contractor for a reasonable price, so on, so on. You have three options, good, fast, and cheap. Choose two, but you can't have all three. So warning signs of a customer that makes you increase your bid. So they want the job done faster than what's provided, they complain about the price or contractors they've worked for in the past. They want to cut items, changing their scope of work. That's kind of interesting. And then we can go down to the comments. And the same thing is we can watch what people are saying, read about it. And once we go down to the comments, we're actually getting conversation about what our consumers are saying, what they like, what they don't like. And just take any patterns and trends you see and put it in the research doc. Now, the one thing I saw on the subreddit is that people typically want a good price, but they want quality work. So we can talk about how we're kind of a good mix between being uh, between affordable and we'll say craftsmanship. Once again, just tossing in kind of a quick idea and then we'll sharpen it up and elaborate on it when we're actually writing. Let's go back to Reddit here, see what they're saying. Now here's a thread on deposits, which are pretty common when you're doing home renovations. And I didn't actually think of that. So let me put that just kind of as a question. Are we going to include a deposit? Deposit, how much? Is it 25%? Is it kind of out throughout the project? Is it 50% up front, 50 after? That's something we might have to think about. And honestly, I might have not even thought of that if it wasn't going through these different kind of Reddit threads. Okay, here's a cool thread I found. It's from four years ago, but it's do's and don'ts of hiring a contractor. They're a first time homeowner, which is perfect. That's probably exactly who we'd be working with a lot of the time. Let's see exactly what people are saying in this thread. Make sure they're licensed and insured. Okay, we have to include that. Include that we're insured and licensed for our 
services. That makes a lot of sense because they're professional, it's legal. That's really good. Don't pay them until you're satisfied with the work. It's one of the most backward businesses ever. Find an intelligent contractor and pay a fair price. So we could probably say something with the guarantee. Not only is there uh, warranties, but you don't pay until you're happy with the work. And we can kind of rework that actual guarantee in section, but it's just a nice idea that we can put in there. When you have a contractor come out and do an estimate, take a good inventory of how they present themselves. Do they have a nice truck that has a company logo? Do they keep everything well kept? Are they licensed and insured? These are telltale signs that someone can decipher whether you're hiring a person from a reputable company or just some guy with a truck and some tools. That's actually pretty interesting. I like that a lot because that builds into authority and credibility and trust. So maybe on the website, we'll really focus also on having people that are in uniforms. There's a logo, it's branded, and it kind of plays into exactly what this user was talking about. So website should be well branded, showing off our team logo, apparel and trucks. Make it appear professional. And what did they say? They had a specific word I liked here. Well kept. I think that's a good way to put it. Well kept. And now forums in the research process, they're essentially just like Reddit. You can look up anything like renovation forum, contractors forum, homeowners forum, and then you do the exact same thing. You just go through the different conversations. You would see what they're talking about, what they like, what they don't, and then take notes on that. Competitors, well, we essentially kind of did that in a way we're looking at the Hinman construction, but what we would do is just put in a list here of you know competitor one website, competitor two website, and so on. And then we can reference those and learn from them as we write. The internal documents, so normally I would ask a client, do you have any kind of content guidelines, branding guidelines, anything internal that would help me understand your brand and what you're trying to achieve. And then the same goes for the buyer's persona. This is really, really important when you're writing. And it's a personification or a general idea of who your client is. Typically it's gonna be things like their age, their income, education, their location. And that's a demographic, and that's good information, but also we're looking for something called psychographics. Think about their emotions, their wants, desires, their pain points or challenges they're experiencing, and so on. And that's actually really important because good copy is emotional and it attaches to those parts of the consumer and actually makes them wanna take action and buy your product or your service. And now what we can do is actually start using all this data and research that we've compiled to answer questions about the audience and also the product and offer that we're giving to them. And then we can reference that while we're writing. And now onto the next step, which is actually asking questions about the product and the consumer. Once we have all that dialed in and done, that's when you can move on to writing your sales copy. Once again, this can take one hour, two hour, it depends on the scope of the project and how much research you need to be confident. But right now what we're gonna do is start asking questions about the product. And of course, when you're doing your own research document and you're creating your own process and system, feel free to customize it and adjust it and ask different questions and note down different things. But this is my personal process that has helped me drive millions of dollars for companies and my clients. And the first thing I'm thinking about is what are the features and benefits of the product? Remember, features are factual pieces of information and benefits are the deeper and typically emotional advantage of that product. Now, of course, feature wise, this would be renovations for, let's see, bathrooms, kitchens, basements and other parts of residential homes. Now the benefits of these, what would be the benefits, right? So I'm gonna write some in here, but try to follow along with me and think of what I might be actually putting in here. And once again, we can go reference back to all the different things we have in here. So let me go to one of these guys. I liked the one, let me find a hidden construction. These guys were really good. I like their copy and the different things they had. So let me go to their kitchen service page and let's see what they have on here. It's the heart of your home is where you spend time with loved ones. Create your dream kitchen. And I like that kind of wording and positioning that we're gonna help them create their dream 
home slash room. So it might be their bathroom, their kitchen, something like that. So we'll create their dream home slash room. Improve property value. Of course, as you do renovations and things like that, you're going to actually add equity and value to your home. So let's see that residential. Sorry. So create dream home slash rooms, improve property value, uh, be able to show off to guests and hold parties slash events. Let's see what else we can find just on our competitor here. I'll improve your lifestyle. Feel more luxurious and successful, I guess you could say, if you have like a really nice home, it's, you know, obviously there's a big emotional benefit and appeal. Let's go to the bathroom section and see once again if we can pick up some benefits about exactly what they're offering. Well, that's a good kind of word to stop settling for average or stop settling for less. Once again, I'm just kind of plugging in these quick little notes and ideas. It doesn't have to be perfect and completely fleshed out. You just want some kind of patterns and notes that you can reference later. I'm going to go over to the additions page. Once again, just trying to pick up a little bit here. Accommodate a growing family. That's interesting. Okay, so we have some features and benefits. That's great. And then what are the emotions and experiencing that they are having or that they're interested in? Once again, this is the, the deeper reason that they're probably actually looking for the service. So they probably want to increase their property value, lifestyle, and appearance to, to others. They want to make their home theirs, make it unique. They want to experience their dream house or their vision of what it would look and feel like every day. They want to feel proud about their homes. And then what is the customer trying to get out of it? So we kind of answered that in here, so we don't need that. We can cut that out. And then what is, you, what is the unique value proposition? If you're selling something, you need to explain how it's better and different from the competitors. We did take some notes up here, actually, that I liked. One-stop shop. Yeah, nice. We can actually take some of the keywords right from that testimonial. We'll use that as our value proposition. So let me just, I'll put it in right here. One-stop shop, no need to hire a designer or architect. We assign you one in-house. We take care of securing any kind of city or building permissions. The quotes is, we'll say the quote is what you pay. No, no surprise fees. Detailed weekly reports, photographs, and updates throughout the project. And then also say warranties and guarantees until you're satisfied. Okay, so what problems does it solve and how can the product or the service be used? We do residential real estate. So problems it solves. So maybe old and worn properties, damages, and we'll say like outdated rooms, additions, and so on. Customer is not liking the look or feel of their home, especially if they are first time home buyers and they need plenty of updates and renovations. So how can it be used? That's pretty much we answer that there. First time home buyers, old and worn properties, damages. Not like them look or feel their home. Maybe needing to renovate and update before flipping and selling. Some people might do that as well. Yeah, so we'll add that. So how much does it cost? Is there any kind of maintenance cost? How much does it cost? So 
quotes are based on each project and the quote is what you pay as we mentioned in the value proposition we will give customers a quote after speaking with them through a free consultation and assessment so they also get that free value that foot in the door and then we can give them the quote but we will say our pricing is our pricing is based on the value we offer and we strive to match competitors or do better but we are not cheap we offer how would you say we offer high quality work and we also we also only work with specific clients and budgets so obviously we can't just say hey we can renovate your house for ten thousand dollars it depends on each thing but at the same time our pricing isn't cheap because we do a really good job we'll base it on what you need we'll give you the free assessment um, we will try to match maybe competitors or do better if you have quotes already um, and then we only work with specific clients and budgets so we're picky and that actually creates scarcity and value and urgency because it makes it look like the company is very successful and they're very picky at who they work with so it adds that kind of idea of luxury and success in their eyes that they're working with a really good company maintenance costs obviously there's really no maintenance costs um, outside of what they would already be paying for their home what's the turnaround or ship time we can say based on the project again but we strive to do it in a timely manner while respecting your property and schedule we will say we pride ourselves in not going over timelines like most contractors and companies do now something that does happen a lot I know this personally is when you work with a contractor um, or some kind of like renovation company and a lot of contractors for that matter in different industries typically they might say hey we'll do it in four weeks it takes six or eight right and obviously you're planning your life around this and then suddenly have these updated um, and you know different timelines now that you weren't really expecting you have to kind of shift around everything and and run around doing things so we'll say that we'll tell you upfront how much it's going to take and then we stick to that to respect your time is it reliable is there a guarantee yes we offer warranties on materials and components we install and then we have a satisfaction guarantee how is it positioned I think we already kind of position it well against the competitors we don't have to be too kind of creative or cheeky with it and then what do previous customers say about it we'll say reference testimonials because we already have those what's the unique mechanism now the unique value proposition is what makes it unique but the mechanism is an individual feature that without it it couldn't even work uh, with this particular service I wouldn't say you're really going to have a unique mechanism it's really just the basic value proposition so we can remove that typically more with direct-to-consumer e-commerce um, technology and software you can have a unique mechanism but with this probably not now we can move on to asking questions about the audience so let's think about who these people are typically first time home buyers or probably older families and couples looking to reinvest into their property older couples yep invest in their property we have that okay beliefs they want to feel more proud about their homes and make it unique in what they originally dreamed of or imagined they usually have something in their head that they want and they want exactly that they want a contractor they can trust and they have probably had a bad experience with one in the past that's very common and I was reading that on social media and in the reddit threads I was seeing that actually quite often and when I was reading some of the data and statistics on home buyers and contractors that was actually a pretty common theme so I wanted to plug that in there because we can talk about once again how we respect your property your time you get a fair quote we stick to that and it's going to make us stand out because they can think of that time maybe they got burned by somebody and how we're different so we'll have that in there 
they see themselves as successful, responsible, and know exactly what they want done with the property. They want to be able to trust whoever they are hiring. And then I'll put up here, so most likely in some kind of professional career and middle class, normal neighborhood, neighborhood and lifestyle. I'm trying to paint a picture of who we're working with there. Okay, now what's their buying temperature? This is really important because cold traffic doesn't know about who we are. Uh, we need to educate them, build credibility, and then essentially pre-frame the interaction um, as we are an authority and here's what we could do because they've never seen us before, they've never met us. And then we have warm traffic and warm customers or leads. These are people who already know about us. Maybe they didn't work with us yet or maybe they've done something small, but they pretty much know what we've already or, you know, are capable of. And then you have hot traffic and these are people that have already bought from us before. How we speak to them is going to be a lot different than someone that hasn't heard of us before. Now we can pretend that, for example, with this project, we're speaking to cold traffic. So I'll just put that in there. And that's going to completely change, once again, how we write the copy, the types of ads we're putting out, the type of paid media and paid social we're doing, once again, depending on the campaign. So why do they need the product? What pain does it solve? I would say that we've probably already covered that. What questions would they have? So how much does it cost? How long does it take? Can I see photos of your work? Are you licensed uh, and insured? What's the process look like? We can also say, what payment types do you do? How long does it take? Yeah, what does the process look like? Do you have references or testimonials? How many jobs do you do at once? How big is the, the team? And so on. So I think that's pretty good. And then what objections would they have? These are things that customers would push against. And it's good to have these in mind because then when you're writing the copy, you can address them in real time. And then they don't stop and think they're, uh, you know, I don't know about the pricing. I don't know about this because you're already covering it. They can just flow through the page right to the call to action and maybe getting that free consultation and phoning you. So price is very common, delivery, performance, reliability, service, quality, and efficiency. I think we've covered a lot of it. So obviously, yeah, it'd be price, quality, the timeline of the project, maybe size of team, credibility, previous work, you can say, uh, perhaps licensing some people might you know really want to work with somebody that's licensed and overall this is just a pretty quick easy example of what the research process would look like but you can see we already have a really awesome six page document we have everything from blog posts market reports testimonials we've answered questions about the audience and product and now the next step would be essentially to start writing your sales copy write that outline that skeleton the, the blueprint move on to the first draft and then write the final edit with your clients feedback and ideas and all throughout that time, you want to be referencing everything you researched. And then also you can research on the go. You might come up with something, the client might ask something, you'll have an idea, and then you can keep researching, go through those reviews and Reddit and so on, and keep plugging away at your research document. But you'll see yourself how much more confident you write, how faster you write, and most importantly, the revenue and the conversions you drive from your copy is honestly going to 10x. It's, it's night and day. But I want to thank you so much for sticking through this long video. Really hope it helped you with uh, the copywriting research process. Let me know down in the comments if there's any other kind of videos you'd like to see. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're new and you want to learn about copywriting and marketing. I also have my courses and other tools and resources in the description. Hope you're having an awesome week and I will see you in the next video.